gaming rig feels like it's caught the flu, then the first thing you should do is take its temperature. After all, overheating is the main culprit behind hardware failure. So checking your hardware's temperature can go a long way in prolonging your device's longevity. Luckily for us, there are a bunch of ways to monitor the temperature of your CPU and your GPU. We'll be listing a couple in this video, so let's begin. The easiest and most basic way to check the temperature of your CPU is through your motherboard's BIOS. To access the BIOS, all you need to do is turn on or restart your computer and start pressing the delete key during the boot up sequence until it pops up. Simple, right? Not every BIOS will look the same, especially with gaming motherboards, but they're all fairly simple to navigate. Just go over the different tabs until you see the CPU settings, and you'll see the temperature there. And don't let the BIOS intimidate you if you've never used it. It will always display a prompt asking you whether you wish to save any changes, so you don't need to worry about accidentally changing something that you shouldn't. Of course, the downside to using BIOS to check the CPU temperature is that you need to restart your computer every time you want to do it. That's where the other solution in this video comes in. Most CPUs and GPUs come with their own overclocking utilities that you probably already have installed even if you don't know it. For CPUs, there are the Ryzen Master and the Extreme Tuning Utility. They're both pretty straightforward and, in addition to checking the temperature, offer extensive overclocking options. However, it is best to stay away from these if you're already experiencing problems with overheating. When it comes to GPUs, you're presented with even more options. AMD and NVIDIA offer their own control panels, the AMD Control Center and the NVIDIA Control Panel. Again, you probably already have these installed, but if not, you can easily download them from the official sites as part of the driver packages. Additionally, graphics card manufacturers also include their own overclocking utilities, which also function as temperature monitors. Given that all of these utilities are compatible even with the graphics card made by other manufacturers, you're left with a plethora of options here. For example, you can always use the MSI Afterburner on an Asus card instead of the Asus GPU tweak. On the other hand, if you need an all-in-one solution, Open Hardware Monitor is an excellent free program that you can download via the link in the description. It's an open source program that's still in beta, but it's more than capable of showing you the temperature of your hardware. What's more, it's compatible with all Intel CPUs up until KB Lake, although it doesn't officially support Coffee Lake or Zen architectures yet. All in all, it's not a flawless program, which is to be expected seeing as it's still in beta, but it's lightweight free and remarkably easy to use to check both the CPU and the GPU temperatures. Still, knowing the temperature of your hardware is good and all, but it's just a first step. It's just as important that you know why you're facing the overheating issue in the first place and how you can get rid of it. And the problem is, more often than not, dust buildup. Every computer that relies on active cooling is bound to eventually accumulate large amounts of dust, and this can greatly impede the cooling system's effectiveness. The only thing left to do when that happens is to clean it. We've written articles to guide you through this process for both desktop PCs and laptops, so check the links in the description if you want to see those. If you're watching this in the future, we probably already have videos for these processes as well. If the problem isn't dust buildup, then you're likely dealing with either poor airflow or defective hardware. If it's the former, you should make sure that there is proper ventilation. The sides of the computer case should not be obstructed, and if the power supply is located at the bottom of the case, make sure it's placed on a solid surface instead of, say, a rug. As for defective hardware, most of the time it's only the cooler or the heat generating component that needs fixing. After all, if the CPU or the GPU themselves gave out, you'd know it. A CPU cooler is fairly easy to replace, but if it's the GPU's fans that need fixing, you should probably turn to a professional. Finally, if all else fails, a great way to improve the airflow in your PC's case is with additional fans. They're pretty affordable and sure to drop the temperature inside your case. And that's pretty much that. These aren't the only options out there, but if all you need to do is monitor the temperature every now and again, you don't need to bother with more powerful software such as ADA64. 
As always, we hope you find this video helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did, and we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.